thank you very much for this invitation. Um, I'm very happy to be here as I can see after one and a half days that we share a lot of interests and global challenges um, as a community of architects. And I would like to introduce you to a project uh, that we, my office, Haider von Beckerath, did in collaboration with Eva and Jesko Feser. So it's a quite rare thing around architects, I think. Um, the, the name of the project is R50, and it's a co-housing project in Berlin. Um, this is the project. You can see that uh, to the right. <laughs> the project is a, a seven-story housing project with 19 apartments and um, several collective spaces to be shared by the inhabitants. And it's situated in a, a post-war area uh, with a lot of housing projects from the 1950s and 60s, which was also one of the challenges. But it's right in the city center of Berlin. Um, here you can see uh, a map of Berlin. You can see the um, inner city, the, the, uh, where the city has been founded, the island to the right. And you can see three of our projects. The pink one is the one I will be talking about. And the other two are to the left. You will find a site of a project that I will show you briefly, a kind of prerequisite um, project. And the other one is a large co-housing project that we are now working on with 70 apartments and 20 studios, which will be a very rich and um, demanding project. So um, this is the project Flotwe 2. It's also a co-housing project that we initiated uh, by ourselves. So we as the architects, Haidon von Beckerath, together with friends of, from New York, and it's a quite typical uh, thing with co-housing, this kind of model project in Berlin, that people are asking for an apartment to rent or rather to buy, and that the market is exploding and that people started to look for their own projects and to found together with architects uh, groups of um, builder owners. Um, this project is a project that we um, finished in 2011. It's a very tiny site that you can see here is only 418 square meters. And as we are very much interested in working on density because we think it's one of the challenges that we face with our cities, um, we build a, a lot of square meters here. But, um, and we did apartments with a depth of 16 meters, but we worked on floor plans and we wanted to show how you can live uh, uh, comfortably, but with very small spaces and um, less square meters as part of this density discussion. So we decided to work on a split level system which would allow for different levels that are that every level has a, a door. So the apartments have a second door, a third door. But this would allow for um, later to split the apartments again or to put two apartments together. And this was our idea to address intergenerational and um, flexible housing. So I, we'll just show you a few photographs. This is a, st a studio on the ground level because we are very much interested to address our buildings to the public space of the street. This is a Mexican artist, Mariana Castillo de Bal, who has her studio here. And... Um, this is uh, one side of one apartment where you can see how tiny the spaces are, but with using sliding doors, we can open them to a larger idea of space. And this is how it looks to the other side. And uh, you can see how we tried to open up the, pri you know, the climate in Berlin. It's not that you would need balconies and terraces all over the years. So we, um, we tried to propose very tiny balcony zones that would be connected with the inner spaces so that you can open the window and you would have like spaces between inside and outside. And this is how the structural architectural um, principle works. So with L50, our second co-housing project, there was a group of people who were really interested in um, working on Affordable housing, you can see a map of Berlin. Red is where the prices are really, really high, which is in the city center. So like in many other European and also global cities, um, 
uh, prices for rent and for buying apartments are really rising. And so this initiative to build a low-cost housing and affordable housing was a real challenge. And we were very lucky because um, the group of people we found, or who found us maybe, um, they were mostly artists and from creative professions, so they were really aware of following the process. So they did not only take part in the design process, but also observed in a way their own relationship to their future ownership. Um, the site was very strange. You can see the um, housing projects from the 1950s and 60s, and you can also see an, an interesting example from the um, urban planning for Berlin after the wall came down. So there was an urban plan to reconstruct large parts of the inner city, and the model shows how the city planners would have liked to, um, that the city would be. But you can also see the challenge where the 1960s housing projects interfere with this block idea. And exactly where this, um, where this comes together, um, we found the site. It was offered by the Senate of Berlin to... Um, initiatives like ours, so it was a concept-based tender, and we had six months to develop um, the social and also the spatial ideas for the project and to bid with a fixed price. So this is an urban planning tool that has been developed in Berlin since um, maybe, I think, two or three years and which is now uh, being further developed in order to, um, to have some influence on the city development via access to ground. Um, yeah, like what you could see here is that uh, we decided to offer a freestanding house, which is rare in Berlin because we have this block idea, but we wanted to refer to the edge and to the street on one hand, but also to the open modernist plan of the existing housing. So in a way we proposed a building that would connect one urban idea with the other one. And we were also... What? Oh, no, I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we were also thinking about a very raw structure. You can see here the reenactment of the Domino House by AA students and their professors at the Biennale of Venice this year, uh, which is a kind of idea for the project. Then the next step was that we were thinking about how to organize a kind of model level of this um, house. And you can see that we were thinking about different sizes of apartments, so it was clear that the structure would be not the um, dividing walls between the apartments, but uh, independent. And the pink spaces are quite interesting because those are um, given by the architects and the inhabitants didn't know in the beginning, so we included 20 square meters of collective space to every level, within the costs, within the, um, uh, all the numbers. So in the end, uh, oh yeah, and this is also very important, so you saw a kind of model level, and here you can see how we tried to put a lot of collective uses and functions to the um, ground level, which is a kind of basement, something between basement and ground level, and um, the garden plan, and what is, which is, what is very nice is that the inhabitants um, decided together with us to have no fences, so in the end the house is really part of the open plan. You can see that it's much more complicated here on the ground floor than it is on the level. Um, the project was published quite early within the design process and the reason was that Arch Plus was interested in the idea of participation that we offered to the group. And um, so I will show you a few pages. You can see um, some floor plans but also some graphic tools how we tried to follow the decision-making process of the whole project. Uh, you can see models that we did together with the future owners, or they did, they, we did them, we discussed them together, because one part of the project was that every single apartment would be designed together with the, um, with the owners. And here you can, this is quite an important, I will not show 
many plans. So this is interesting because you can see the overall structure of the building, but you can also see the different collective spaces, such as the all-around balconies that are not owned by sing, uh, individual um, owners, but they belong to the collective space, so there's no division between the balconies, but if they um, step on outside of the apartment, they will be in a kind of collective space. And also, uh, the right drawing, the axon, you see that there is now a, a larger collective space that they share, and this was possible because after a lot of discussions, we decided to take the, sweat, uh, the 20 square meters per level out and to put them all together on the ground floor because they decided they would prefer to have one bigger space with multifunctional use. Um, I'm showing you, I think, two or three images of the construction site, and what is interesting is that they are quite similar to the um, finished building. So, uh, here you can see how the facade, which is a wooden facade that we designed in, um, especially for this building, is a modular facade that would be able to um, uh, to um, to get into a dialogue with the individual floor plans. So every facade with every apartment is different, but the modu modular pieces behind are the same. And I really love this picture because it shows the the character of each apartment because each apartment has one open corner, and you can already see some of the characteristics that we will see later. Um, this is level five and six, and just to give you an idea of a comparison of different floor plans, so it's three apartments each, there are two cars, there's one uh, staircase, and you see the differences how the yeah, different apartments, um, the layout. Um, this is the souterrain level and level one, because there's no ground floor, we um, put the ground floor into the earth, and uh, you can see how those two levels. Um, yeah, and the um, collective space to the right has two levels, so you can see it in the souterrain and level one. Um, those are two images of the inhabitants during the process, and um, you, you don't see any children, but the children, there are a lot of children in this building, and they really followed the process, so that in the end they would um, draw their house, not like we know, but in a very different style. Um, this is the finished building. This is a view from the street, and you can see to the right a ramp that goes down just along the collective space. There are a lot of bicycles, and then they have a kind of covered entrance area in the back of the building. Um, you can also see the all-around balconies, which are the typical um, aspect of the facade of this building. Another one where you can see uh, the ramp, and also here you can see quite nicely how the level one uh, connects with the street level. This is the collective room, I think, two months ago. So they um, started to live in this building in January uh, 2013 or February, and it took quite a while for them to adapt to this uh, space. So everyone brought something, so it's not a kind of coherent interior design, but a kind of mix of different... Um, and you can also see the uh, stair that le leads up to the first level of this building, uh, of this room. Um, here I would like to introduce you to the material and surfaces and the finishings of the building. We really worked on low-cost housing, so after a few discussions we decided to have less surfaces, less finishings, but of course there was a lot of detailing for us to make it the way it looks like. It's not like um, taking surfaces away, but there's a lot of detailing to make it yeah, possible. A few images of the interiors of the apartments. We also um, proposed certain standards to the apartments. We were really interested in learning about future affordable housing could work, so stand to work with standards was very interesting, but of course not with ready products. In this case, we cho have chosen a kind of 
ready-made kind of product that is usually used for public uh, toilets and bathrooms, and we proposed that they would, we would use them in the apartments, but in different colors. Uh, another one where you can see how the wooden facade that is from the inside exactly the same like from the outside works together with the concrete floor and the concrete ceiling. Uh, yeah, some other... Here's a corner. You can see that the apartments are really full of light, so it's really interesting how the dark surfaces of the concrete are um, in a way lit by the amount of light. And now I would like to show you, this is for example two apartments, what we can see here, one to the front and one to the back, and they in a way learned how to deal with it, so sometimes they would visit themselves, sometimes there, there are plans, but it's a very subtle way of um, showing where privacy starts. And this is a drawing that's quite important, important. it shows how the raw structure of the building connects with the very refined detailing of the facade in many layers. Um, and the roof terrace, which is, it's not allowed to have a terrace there, just a covered space. And we designed a kind of tent so that they would have a kind of winter garden, but of course um, they used the terrace. And um, now I would like to talk about the afterlife. It's not the afterlife because the house is still there and people are living in it, but for us as the designers and architects of the house, there's a kind of afterlife. And the reason is because um, there are a lot of artists in the house and also friends of them who come. So this is a photograph by an artist, Birgit Schlieps. So there are some kind of reviews of the building which are not published, just um, kind of reflections and this is, I think, one of the first parties they had in the collective space. This is the same evening from the outside. This is a workshop me and my partner Tim Heide held with our students from Cornell last February. So we rented, it's not our house, but we rented the collective space from uh, the group. And it was really nice and you can still see the lamps from the New Year's Eve party. And then, it's also part of this afterlife uh, concept. This, there's a student from Saint Etienne, a design student, who proposed a kitchen for the collective space. So it's almost now out of our reach. So there are new designs and new um, uh, ways of seeing the building that are, yeah, that are, um, it's a new process. And I would like to, to introduce you to another publication. This is Texted zur Kunst, Architecture in December 2013, I think. And there was a kind, an interesting publication about the building because there was a talk between um, uh, several inhabitants. One of them is one of the architects about the house and it was about authorship and um, the process of participation. And we really liked the idea of talking about the project. And there was another photographer who took um, new f f uh, images. And I would like to show you some of those images because in a way they are as interesting as the ones that we commissioned right after finishing the building. Uh, they show a few details. Okay, in the end, I would again introduce the two offices. So Eva and Jesko Feser has a strong background in um, working on art installations and also working for art and cultural institutions. My office has a background in various projects and also especially in housing. And the collaboration was quite interesting because they brought in the, the idea of um, um, participation and a... And a um, uh, evaluating the participation process to work with um, 
owners, they all live in the building, so they, are, they have a double role in a way. And for us, it was a very interesting project in order to um, refine our strategies on technical, sustainable, and uh, overall holistic approach to affordable housing. Um, before I thank you for listening, I would like to um, ask a question. Uh, we think a lot about what we can learn from R50 because we all know that we have a very nice group of people who are very educated in a way, in an artistic way. So I think with another group it would not have been possible. But what we can learn is that a lot of details and challenges of this building could be applied to other projects, of course in a different way. If you have an anonymous um, clients such like uh, people who can really not afford um, the prices on the market, we could um, learn again to work with certain standards and also, of course, uh, think about more flexible spaces that would address intergenerational housing, but also um, uh, communal spaces that we think is a very special aspect of this house. Thank you very much.